Hey folks, it's James, and a while back I made a video about trying the new SketchUp for iPad for the first time, and it turned out to be my most popular video ever. There's a lot of new and useful stuff in the iPad version of SketchUp, but one feature that almost nobody talks about is the Styles menu. It's hidden in plain sight, and honestly, most of us never need it or touch it. But if you're building simple masking models to trace over or render in Procreate, Understanding the settings in the Styles panel can make a huge difference in how your drawings read. So get out your iPad, download the SketchUp for iPad and original Procreate rendering file that comes with this video if you want to see the layers and follow along, and let's take a look under the hood at what those settings actually do and how to set them up to get the best possible result. So I'll open up the Styles menu, and you'll notice that right off the top you have Edge, Settings, Face Settings, background settings and model settings. And let's go into the background first, just to make a point. Now we've been working with a gray background that you see here, and it has also a feature for the sky, which is back here. And we can change that color however we want. And I like a fairly light sky, not too distracting again. Let's stick with that. And I'll tap that color again to set that. But it also has a ground, which we have, we've been working without the ground color activated. So let's look at that. When I tap this and activate it, immediately it becomes kind of a familiar and very subtle SketchUp tan, you might call it. So this is option number one. And it brings a certain humanity to the model that it lacks in pure black and white. But that is an option for you. Now I'll turn it off because we've been very architectural about this and our Procreate rendering will not rely on any kind of background color. In fact, it won't re rely on any color at all. So I'll turn off that and there's no harm in keeping the sky. So let's go next to the edge settings. Now when I open up the edge settings, you'll notice that the edges are already selected. That's the default mode. But watch what happens when I toggle edges on and off. It's really kind of a beautiful thing. And if I combine that, if I go back now to the background settings and I turn on the ground, you really do get a kind of a subtle and interesting way. Some of you may even want to stop there with your renderings and just make them maximally architectural. I'll turn off the ground again. And let's go back and we'll turn edges back on and watch what happens, okay? There you go. In fact, we can even turn off now that some people may find these axes, the green, blue, and red axes distracting. So I can go all the way down to model settings. And under there, I can turn those axes off, on and off. So I'll turn those off. And let's get back focused. So we've talked about background settings, and we talked about the model settings, and we're just looking at the edge settings now. So on and off in the toggle here. And that's Nobody's going to argue that those are pretty important, okay? Now, the next possibility is what they call back edges, and watch what happens when I turn these on, okay? That's basically the maximally architectural view, I suppose, if you want to really study in the office what's going on, make sure the relationships from front to back, that's a wonderful way to do it. But it's probably not going to interest your client. It might even confuse them. So let's turn those off. And the next thing is profiles. And profiles are going to create just what they say, a heavier profile. And this is the lowest setting you can pick, number number two. But here comes the pencil in its wonderful utility again. I can scribble this out, and I can write in a new number. And then if I tap Done here, notice how much thicker that profile becomes. And I'll do that again. I'll scribble the four out. I'll enter a two. And I'll tap done here and back it goes to just the slightest bit of profile. Or if I want to go back completely to no profile, I can actually put in a one here and done. But ironically, one is the same as no profile with one very important distinction. Watch what happens to this cylinder when I, even with a profile of one, when I turn off profile, that cylinder disappears. So we don't want to do that. We want to have, at the very least, a profile of one. And some of you may prefer a profile of two or more. I'll do that again. Wait for it to take. And I'll turn that on. 
and that's a slightly slightly more traditional look you might say to that model now the next step is the depth cue so i'll turn off profiles for the moment and i'll well let's leave them on and i'll tap the depth cue and that becomes even more pronounced now i'm not entirely sure what the difference is between depth cue and profile but i think what happens is that depth cue makes the lines that are closer to you thicker okay and the same thing applies here and you'll be playing with this for your own interest and edification here's number five i'm going to tap that and notice it grows even thicker i can go all the way up to 10 just to make the point and i'll tap done and now we're getting really grotesque but again notice that back here nothing has really happened so the closer you get the more thick those lines get when you activate depth cube now i'll cross that out and go back to a nice safe number two but I actually don't use the depth cue. I rarely use it at all. The next thing is extension. And that's that famous thing where it makes the lines just a little bit longer and go past each other. So here I'll turn off, I'll even turn off profiles. And now let's look at extension. I'll toggle it on and notice it. it's very subtle, but notice there's just a little bit of extension of those lines beyond the other line. And I can make that more pronounced. I'll turn it up to eight, say. Now watch carefully when I tap done. And there you see it grow. It's very subtle. Maybe it's easier to see here. I'll cross these out. I'll go up to 12. I'll tap done and watch what happens when I tap done. Off they go. They grow a little bit more. So if that's your style, I think that's a very cool thing and it can be used. You know, SketchUp for iPad has such beautiful precision and it's, it's such a high resolution program that that's a lot less objectionable in my mind than it is in SketchUp for desktop. And notice if I turn back, if I turn on the profiles again, I've lost that line around my, my cylinder of my chimney. If I turn on profiles again, that line comes back. And I'll reduce the profiles to one. I'll make, actually you have to make kind of a traditional one for it to read it. I'll tap that. And now I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the actual line around the cylinder, and I've got a little bit of funkiness with my extensions, but that's too much for me. And I'll generally dial that back to maybe a six or something. And watch again what happens here when I do that. Back to more of a traditional slight crossing of the lines, reminiscent of uh, Francis Ching and his famous book about architectural presentation. Now the last thing here, there's two last things. One is endpoints. And I'm not a big endpoint fan, but I know it looks like it is the place where your pencil stopped and it can be appealing for some people. So again, the pencil works to increase or decrease that. And I'll go to a two and it didn't read that. Now it's a two and I'll tap done and watch what happens when I do that. They'll be much more subtle. And um, it's actually not a bad thing. I could see, well, see, it looks a little wacky when you go from a distance. So I'm not a big fan. I think it makes it a little too intense. In fact, now that I look at it, I think these extensions are a little heavy handed too. So if I toggle those off, it looks a lot more, a lot more clean, a lot more like a Richard Meyer drawing. So I think I will turn off extensions completely. And the last one is something that I rarely use, and that is jitter. So let's turn on jitter. And maybe you'll see why I don't use it. I just don't find it useful. I think it's meant to imitate um, a certain kind of pencil technique. But I find that it breaks up too much to be useful to me. So I usually leave off jitter. And the last thing that we'll look at is the, that's edge settings. And now let's look at face settings. And here again, we have the choice to change the color of any of these. So I can leave my front faces white, but I could go to some sort of interesting brown color for my back faces. And that isn't bad at all. I mean, if you're, if you're designing things and trying to figure out what works best, that's kind of a beautiful, beautiful way to do it. So you can switch that to anything at all you interested in, but I want to keep it black and white now just for simplicity's sake. 
So I'll go to the second lightest value and tap out of that. Now X-ray mode is exactly as it sounds. You'll see through and you'll see everything in X-ray mode. And that may be useful to you. It's certainly useful when you're trying to find things that you've lost track of. And we've all had that experience. And there's X-ray mode. And let's turn that off and let's go to wireframe. Again, not highly useful. Wireframe on its own. Uh, it'll tell you in, tell you things about your model that are going wrong perhaps, but it's not useful for our rendering. And then if I go to hidden line, now this is usually my favorite mode for rendering. So we'll come back to that. That's hidden line and here's hidden line, but shaded. So that is also, now I take it back because hidden line alone, you know, hidden line still has the shadows, so that's good. And I'm not really sure too much of the difference. I guess the difference is shaded will show you color, whereas hidden line will not. And then shaded with textures, if you have textures, that will make a difference, but we do not have any textures, so they are the same. And finally, monochrome. And we've been keeping ours one, we've been keeping ours monochrome from the beginning, but you can see if we look down at the Aaron figure and I toggle monochrome on or off, then his color will come back. Thanks for watching, and if you want to go deeper into the full iPad workflow from SketchUp to Procreate Rendering, check out my complete course library linked below. If you missed the trying the new SketchUp for iPad for the first time video when I made it, click here and I will see you in the next video.